Here we go, the battle between Scout and Warhammer Titan continues with <laughs> Levi showing up and scaring the hell out of everyone. <laughs> it's such a great line. It's so perfect. They just do not care. This is just their life. You don't know what we've been through. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You're damn right. <laughs> They've really been training. This is a whole new level. Feels like a little bit of a uh, Levi influence. The only one missing is Reiner, right? And Zeke, of course. What just happened? Did she just generate from that crystal state? <laughs> it's just so cool, this whole scene. The music and everything. How you feeling, Levi? Oh, there he is. If I'm Zeke, I take one look at Levi, I turn back around. Zeke knows. Zeke's the only one who knows. <laughs> well, I guess Pe Peek knows too. They know the power. Does Aaron Yeager even deserve to breathe? Brother... <laughs> so much for rescuing Aaron. Round two. Start. Oh. <laughs> After this epic intro. Action-wise, it's, you know, about all you could ask for, I think. As conflicted as I am, you know... The conflict adds to it, but as conflicted as I am, I do like the scouts, or I like a lot of them at least. You know, I love Levi, I love Connie, I love Sasha. I know what they've been through. I root for them as a, as a group. Yes, it hurts me that they seem a little bit confused about, you know, their methods, but on some level their cause is, is justified. They have a right to live, they have a right to survive. And the fact that they've been through all the things we've seen them go through in the show and are still like rising to the challenge and still fighting, they're amazing. But on the other hand, on the Marley side, they were just attacked. Their civilians were attacked. Their friends were killed. Udo's gone, you know? Not hard to understand why they're fighting. At this moment, at least, it's not about Eldian hatred. It's just, it's perfectly understandable why they're fighting. And then on top of all that, you have how amazing all their powers are and how well the, the action comes out. And that's just the setup. And on top of that, you have just the fact that their powers are amazing. The action sequences are great, you know? It's really good stuff. Assault. Gee, I wonder why, uh, why they call it that. War has changed. Armin is also, also missing. It's a huge, colossal game changer right there. He's alive, that's good. Reiner was successful. And the insane action continues. Has Zeke gotten any better, I wonder? I'll bet Zeke won't make the same mistake underestimating them twice, though. Still with the Kruger thing, huh? Yeah, right, right. It wasn't your fault, Falco. Good guy, Reiner. Priorities. Reiner... Reiner takes some abuse, man, in this show. He's always on the verge of death. Yeah. This is just Reiner's existence. He does. I feel like Reiner has turned a very important corner. When he took the gun out of his mouth, he made a decision, I think, for the kids. Yeah, that's the right thing to say, if he can hear you. There's a very interesting chance for redemption for Reiner in these kids. You know, we've seen how he directly connects them to people in his past, you know, like Berthold, Annie, Marcel, and nothing will ever change what happened, you know, but there's, there is some beauty for me in the idea that that just is what it is, and you can still do great things, you know, you can still do something heroic. The villain hero titles or whatever, you know, they're not really what matters. Nobody is one label or category throughout their whole lives. It's just you have this moment and you can choose to do the best thing you know how to do in this moment. And from there, maybe there might be something you can build in that categorical way. If Reiner starts making those choices, if he starts doing the right thing, it's a long road, but he actually can build something good for himself. He, he can have a future. We don't often think about it that way. You know, we're very wired towards, like, punish the bad. There's something kind of painful sometimes and oddly conflictual about thinking that somebody who's done terrible things can go on to be happy or successful. But shouldn't we want that? You know, like, isn't that ideal that people who've done terrible things can then go on to use that and turn it around? You know, isn't the alternative a lot more bleak? I think on a, on a very wholesome level, you allow people the chance for redemption. Or if not redemption, just the chance to do good now, whatever their past. So I think that is what Reiner has to live for, at least character-wise. Pikachu is deadly, honestly. And she only got more deadly. There you go. 
Show the proper respect. <laughs> He's gotten better and faster doing this. I wouldn't count on that. No, but this is the scouts. They have Armin's brain, Hanji's brain. Oh no, not this again. Stop with the baseball. Yeah, I was wondering about that. I was wondering how he felt about that now. Because they're brothers. He's shown in the past that he's not really after killing Aaron necessarily. <laughs> Levi, yeah. <laughs> he's got a grudge and I don't blame him. He's been having nightmares about this ever since. Levi's being cautious. McGath, McGrath, whatever his name is, has a thing to him. He's a little bit weird with the whole first shot stuff, but he's not just a mindless killing machine. At least he cares about the kids. Aaron Yeager. Gabby is here to win the battle. I don't... Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh god, Armin. What were you saying about Marley advantage? Gone. Has his power increased or am I imagining that? It seems like the radius of this is a lot crazier. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No. It's, this is not the way. Whoa! He did it again! <laughs> is he still in there? No, he's still alive. This is also awful. It's like, I can't win, you know? As great as the action is, you know, I don't want anybody to die, really. Wow. It's just, it's so many mixed feelings. It's, it's so amazing. It's so awesome. Oh, God, but it's so awful at the same time. Oh, man. And doesn't it feel in some way that they're all playing someone else's game? Does that make sense? Like, speaking of cycles, you know, we're in this state where both sides think that if I don't do this, I don't survive. And I guess for everyone involved, that ecosystem is not something that they had any hand in. It's just something that they were born in. So what are they even doing? You know, like, they're continuing this battle that's been set out in front of them. Like, they're just following the railroad tracks of tragedy. Someone's got to get off. You know, like, someone's going to get off the tracks eventually. As dumb as that sounds out loud. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's tragic, the whole thing. It doesn't make me feel good. Where's Edward Elric when you need him? Where's Winry Rockbell? But man, are these battles epic, <laughs> I guess. Seems like Armin has, you know, made his choice in a way. Speaking of civilians. Now that's a shot right there. How you doing, Armin? How you holding up inside? Is this the way you saw it going down? We need an adult in the room. Honestly, the first person who comes to mind is Levi, but he's not really equipped. He's not really the leadership type. He can lead by example, but not really by ideas or through speech. I feel like Levi would not be able to persuade people. He would just be able to like either leave or stay and just try to do things on his own terms in the midst of that. But I don't think he can steer the ship. In Erwin's absence, it doesn't feel like really anybody can steer the ship. And that that's creating a power vacuum for for Aaron. Armin has great leadership abilities, but I feel like just the role between him and Aaron, he's not going to be able to do that in that relationship. Maybe John John, because we know he's gone through a lot of inner conflict and, and soul searching about what leadership means. And he does actually seem like a better leader now, just from what little I've seen of him so far, but that's tricky too. There's no like clear choice for like who's going to steer the ship. And on the Marley side, it's not Zeke. I know that Zeke is a popular character, but for me, I feel like just based on what I've seen from him so far, unless he's radically changed, he doesn't have enough scruples. Like the fact that he was able to maul the, the scouts and seem to enjoy it, 
he's not the one. He's not the one to be that cognizant of like the the huge moral issues here. Is Reiner the ultimate hero of the story? Mikasa showing potential with her doubt last episode, but that would be a major, major thing for her to go against Eren. She's not quite there yet, although that may be where she's going. And he cut his berries and cream hair. He looks a lot better. A lot better. I like this hairstyle more. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I bet he has some sympathy for Bertholdt now. Not only from this, but having his memories. No. This is not John John. There's no way. No, he missed intentionally. That's what I'm choosing to believe. It's because of your heart. It's your heart. And it's a good thing. Well, the declaration of war happened on this day. The end of the war might happen on this day. Between these two nations. They're really going all out here. Oh, wow. Oh, he cut it. That's different. There's been so much power escalation all around, honestly. It's what you want to see. Got it. So the jaw could cut through the Warhammer Titan thing. Aww. He's such a sweet kid. It's, you know, Gabby at this point, you know, she started out as this brainwashed kid, but now she has like an actual reason from her own eyes, her own perspective. These people come in and destroying her home and her friends and stuff. You don't need to teach that. This is Hanji. Wow. Hanji could be the adult, come to think of it. I, I believe in Hanji's moral compass. <laughs> You should be so lucky. Yeah, exactly. Strength is what you want. You also want his, his wisdom. His bravery, his dashing good looks, his one-handed horse riding abilities. The guy's got it all. Mikasa and Levi together, it's just too much. Lord help us if Eren gets another Titan power. <laughs> Seriously. That face. Mikasa's inner conflict continues and intensifies. Did he... Did he just get the... Warhammer. Oh no. There's nobody who could stop him now. Except maybe the Ackerman team. <laughs> McGath is just done. He's had enough. No pressure, Reiner. <laughs> Honestly though, I feel like eating the Jaw Titan would be great for Eren, but the Warhammer Titan, he already got that. That's insane. No, Reiner. That's not the way. Damn it. <laughs> it sort of has to be this way, I think, for Reiner. Speaking of redemption, or something like redemption at least, I think it sort of has to be difficult like this for it to mean something. In some way, there's a, there's a spiritual choice happening for Reiner where he can either choose to fade away completely, let go, give up, fall into despair, live in misery, or start the climb, you know, like start the climb towards something that is good. I, you know, before I was speaking about like starting with the best thing you know right in that moment, and then doing that again, and then doing that again, and gradually you actually do build something that is greater than the sum of its parts. But turning it around like that in the beginning is incredibly difficult, incredibly painful. You got all this momentum of like terrible choices and 
bad decisions and misery and self-hatred and all these things. But that is what makes it powerful. That's what makes it important. And that's, that's I think, what makes it inspiring is the idea that you actually can do something good no matter the, the mistakes you've made. The idea of facing that hill, that uphill struggle, and then just making a choice to, to do it. So I really want Reiner to do this. You know, I really want him to fight. Not to kill Eren, not to win the conflict, not for Marley and victory or whatever, but to protect the things he cares about in a way that's non-vicious and non-hateful. Will he be able to do that? I have no idea. History in the show says no, but I'm hopeful. And not just for him, but for others. It's interesting, you know, there, you can feel there's conflict among the characters, among a lot of the characters. They're making choices right now, you know, they've chosen sides. They probably feel like they're making the best of a bad situation, but... It's good to me, it's a relief for me to see that there's nuance in them. And at any point, any of them could actually make better choices. There's a hero vacuum right now that needs to be filled. Anybody can win. Winning does not make you a hero. Winning does not make you good. Winning doesn't even necessarily solve all your problems. You know, like all this talk about choice and having no choice, that assumes we even know what the outcome of all this will be. A victory today is easily a loss tomorrow. It, it just depends on things that are way out of our control. What makes something heroic is not just winning, but winning without perpetuating the evil. Taking those things on, living in a value-based way, a principled way, almost ensures your destruction, you know, or the loss of what you want. But that's part of why it's heroic. The decision to do it anyway, and the ability to rise above it and actually accomplish it. To win and to be good. That's the ideal. Values are great. You know, I feel like really believing in your own values and not doing things you know are wrong gives you something that nothing else can touch. That's connection. That's understanding. That's living. But by the same token, there's potentially a weakness to only thinking about values and just being willing to concede or give up. You got to engage with the world as well. So in a sense, I think the ultimate is both. You know, the ultimate is like, you do what you need to do. You know, you, you protect the people you care about. You fight for what you believe in, but you don't demean yourself in the process. You don't make the world worse in the process. You, through grit and inner strength, carve out one rung higher than the one you received. Without blame, without excuses, with the willingness to take responsibility and to sacrifice, that's what creates the space for something better, something more meaningful, worthwhile. That's what breaks the cycle. So who's it gonna be, you know? <laughs> who's capable of making that choice? Who's capable of doing the difficult work of taking on Aaron and, and slowing him down? Who's capable of asking the hard questions and like, saying the bitter truths. There's a lot of opportunity here for someone to rise up. As there is in life, <laughs> there's always opportunities for people to like be heroic. It's just, it's difficult. It's difficult because of the sacrifice it takes and the fact that it ruins the easy game others are playing and so they'll come for you. Maybe Reiner can actually be that person in a way and maybe the tragedy of his past experiences will make him stronger in that. That's my hope at least. But we'll have to see. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> that's the end of this episode. I'll see you guys next time when Reiner and Aaron probably do jujitsu as they are wont to do.